So are we looking at the end of the AI video motion brush? Well, not quite yet, but today we are taking a look at a new model that just might be how we control action and camera in the next iteration of AI video tools. Plus, I've got to look at a few other promising projects coming out of the AI video research space, including a new lip sync model on par or possibly better than Emo Talker, the you know current lip sync model that everyone is talking about, a new model allowing for camera control after generation, and something for all of you that like to generate AI images but also like to use manual mode on your camera. Okay, lots to cover, let's dive in. Now, at this point, we have all become very accustomed to motion brushes, but we can all also admit that sometimes doing some very simple things like having a character raise its arm up and then raise it back down again can be troublesome at best. Well, now we might be looking at the at least the beginning of the end of motion brushes with Pandora which is a general world model a la Sora and allows for any time control with actions expressed in natural language. The only problem with it is that it turns all of your characters into eight foot tall blue cat people. Anyone? Now, while I'll say that the video output is not exactly the most high fidelity thing that you're going to see today, that's actually not what we're looking at. What we're looking at here is how multiple prompts can change the course of action over the course of the runtime of the video. So going through the paper, and again, I've got a caveman brain when it comes to this stuff, but I would like to thank the Pandora writers for not throwing in a bunch of hieroglyphic math that I really can't read. Basically, the autoregressive model processes text or your prompts and all of the previous frames of your video while predicting what future frames will look like. And that allows for real-time prompt control and longer video generation. And while I will say that in the examples here, there are still a lot of like the typical AI quirks, for example, in this video of Beth here hanging out at the ski lodge, uh, as she raises her hand, you know, it kind of morphs in. And then uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that there's like kind of uh, somebody laying on the couch here. And then as her hand passes by, that person vanishes. Uh, that said, five fingers. But the important part is that this level of prompt coherence and fluidity is not possible in any other current AI video generator. Another really impressive one is use spoon to scoop some broccoli. And because you know Pandora has an LLM and a visual model attached to it, it knows what the broccoli is. Uh, you know, in an alternate here, it's used the spoon to stir some rice. And once again, Pandora knows what the rice is. The POV driving stuff looks really good. I do tend to think that there's a lot of dash cam footage out there in training material. And to Pandora's credit, they definitely do highlight a number of limitations with the model, uh, with this cartoon dog. Pick up the wallet. That's not, that's not a wallet. We all know what that is, and that is not a wallet. Again, Pandora is very much still in the research phase, although there is code available uh, over on GitHub. I'll have that linked down below. I'll be keeping an eye on Pandora, and I'm literally biting my tongue to not make an avatar joke right now, but I'll let you know as things develop with it. Okay, moving on. Next up, we have MoFit, or Video Diffusion Models are Training Free Motion Interpreter and Control Lee. I think there was supposed to be an R at the end of that. MoFit is a new method for understanding and controlling motion in AI-generated videos. It kind of feels a little bit like a simplified version of Boximator, which we looked at a while back. So the way this works, which they are calling synthesized motion control, is that you begin by masking an area and then providing arrow commands to say, you know, what motion you want that area to take. And what's cool about this is that you can provide multiple arrows or multiple motions. So, you know, in this case, we can be as simple as having a bunny look to the left. Uh, we can have a cat nodding up and down, or we can have a bunny very vehemently saying no. I will have to dock them one point for not having an up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right example. We can obviously push in and zoom out with synthesized motion control by providing the appropriate arrows, nothing to really write home about there. And while this does seem like something we have seen before, in fact, actually, I just talked about a similar arrow feature that is coming to Pixiverse in my last video. Quick note on that, apparently I jumped the gun on that feature. It actually doesn't release until May 30th. So depending on when you're watching this, it, you know, it may have already released. If you missed that video though, you can check it out. It is linked down below. Back to MoFit. It does have have a few other tricks up its sleeve, including reference motion control in which you can provide it motion, you know, camera motion 
of a video and then it will apply it to the output generation. For example, we have like kind of this, you know, pagoda that we're flying by and then in the second output, it's a cat, but it's the same camera motion. Another feature is point drag, which I actually think is going to be a bigger deal as we continue to move forward as something like this not only allows you to control motion, but it allows you to control the timing of your motion within your clip. We round out with some comparisons to other video models, uh, including including Gen 2, you know, the bunny and that top row, all of the models look very serviceable. Uh, obviously, when you move into the Surfer, where you know, especially in the Gen 2 version, where the Surfer is masked and you've just got this arrow going up, yeah, it does look like, you know, the Surfer is being called up by a UFO. What's interesting about Mofit is the fact that it not only gets the motion of the Surfer, but it actually does animate the waves in the background as well. The paper for Mofit is out, no code as of yet. Uh, I will have a link to the paper down below. Next up, we have 3D It Scene, which very much sounds like a board game that I had to play at a party I did not want to be at. This is editing any scene via language guided detangled Gaussian splatting. So basically being able to edit a 2D image via Gaussian splatting, but it does do video as well. There is a demo available for you to try out over on Hugging Face. Uh, personally, I wasn't able to get my own images working here. Uh, for some reason, it just kept erroring out. But uh, if you play around with one of the examples, you can kind of see how this works. So we've got this image of this boy in a window. Uh, all you have to do is come up and mask the boy out. You have a section down here for text prompts uh, describing the image, a boy standing near the window, uh, prompts to the left and right areas in the novel view. So what you're doing is actually describing what is to the left and to the right of the photo. In this case, they just put a house and then the area behind the foreground subject, uh, which is they just left is empty. After you hit the run button, you'll be provided with a video example. And like clearly, as you can see, uh, our video is now panning to the left and we are being provided with details that extend beyond our frame. But here's where things get really interesting because within the interactive panel, we can begin playing around with the X and Y offsets uh, as well as the Z offset and then the rotation over Z as well. Um, so let's just kind of arbitrarily set a few of these and then hit the inference single frame. And as you can see here, here, we've definitely altered the angle of the image. It also does do video as well. Now, granted, you aren't getting character motion in that video, so maybe this might be more suited for, you know, landscape type shots or product shots. This kind of uh, rotational control is something that I think that we will be seeing a lot more of in image generators coming up pretty soon. Uh, and it is important to note that 3D scene, it does allow you to actually do editing in this as well. As you saw, we moved the bear kind of towards the background here, and you can even essentially paint brush the bear out. Code for 3D Scene is available now. It's over on GitHub, link down below. And I just wanted to point out in this example, as the sheep vanishes, I think we all know what happened to that sheep. Quick one before we head over to the new lip sync model. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. This is camera settings as tokens modeling photography on latent diffusion models uh, and is actually written by anonymous authors, which is the first time I think I've seen that. This is one that I think the photography nerds will definitely get behind as this allows you to control your aperture settings, your lens length, and even your ISO settings. So let's start off with, this is the prompt that they sort of have as default, half body portrait of a beautiful Portuguese woman, pale skin, brown hair, blah, 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 some cherry blossoms in the background. So uh, it's set currently to a focal length of 50 millimeters. Let's kick that up to 85 millimeters. Um, and we will do an aperture of, we'll kick this down to 2.8, which, or actually let's go 1.8, because I've always wanted a lens that has 1.8. That should give us that nice sort of depth of field blurry background. Um, and I'm gonna do a 400 on the ISO, and let's see what we get. And not bad. Now to note the actual aesthetics of the image aren't that great. I don't think that this particular image model was, you know, the most stylistically trained, but what we're looking at here more are things like, this does look like it would have been shot with an 85 millimeter lens and the background blur sort of depth of field does look representative of a fast lens like a 1.8. So swapping around our settings to a 35 millimeter lens and let's kick the aperture up to 14, which should give us a sharper background. 
And we end up once again getting, again, it's a pretty bland image, but uh, again, this looks like it would potentially be shot with a 35 millimeter lens. Uh, and more importantly, that F14 gives us a, you know, a sharper background. So while this may not be for everyone, I, I do think it's a really cool idea. So kudos to you, anonymous authors, and something that I would love to see, you know, image generators incorporate into their advanced options. I'll keep an eye on this one and I'll let you know if the code drops. Okay, let's go flap our lips with a bunch of gibberish. So we've got a new player in the AI lip sync arena. Oh, well, not a new player, it's Tencent. So it's a it's another player has entered the lip sync arena. They're coming in with VExpress, which is a simple method that balances different control signals through a series of progressive drop operations. Of course, I, I don't know why we didn't think of that sooner. What's funny about VExpress is that they are going directly at two of the most impressive lip syncs that we have seen yet. Uh, first up, Emo, where they are, you know, using literally the exact same examples. When I was a kid, I feel like you heard the thing, you heard the term, don't cry. You don't need to cry. Crying is the most beautiful thing you can do. The Audrey Hepburn example was probably one of the more famous emo talker examples. There was also this one, uh, which is equally as impressive. I am outraged by this. I'm absolutely disgusted. So a big key to how this is working is definitely in this kind of open pose V shape, hence, you know, the name V Express. Uh, also aesthetically perfectly matching our Joker frame here. And as you can see, as we run the video, you know, that V tracks along with the mouth and also explains how he got those scars. But V Express wasn't just content with going after Emo Talker, they went right after Vasa One as well, the Microsoft model that we saw earlier that we were told we are not getting. So, you know, sometimes nothing happens and sometimes everything happens all at once and you just kind of deal with it. And it's also just strange to both be extremely worried about different things. So while there are a couple of lip glitches in the video, I would say that in terms of, you know, facial expression, acting, head bobble, blinking, that this is definitely right on par with Vasa. And while Microsoft said that Vasa One is a research project and will not be released, uh, apparently Tencent is just like, release the hounds because the code is available over on GitHub. Link is down below. Rounding out, taking you know, basically everything that we talked about here today and kind of packaging it up with a bow that I think everyone can get behind, we have Sign LLM. Sign LLM takes text, then converts it to sign language or ASL, and then outputs that to a video model, which then delivers that text. So this also uses open pose in order to, you know, sort of generate up the sign language and the results do look really good. Now, granted, I do not understand sign language. So, I mean, this could be completely wrong as far as I know. And we are talking about, you know, hands and AI video. So I do leave it up to someone in the audience that perhaps actually understands ASL to qualify whether this is actually making sense or whether it's, you know, total gibberish. Also, we should probably be a little bit wary about using the Elizabeth Olsen model as we do not want to end up with another Scarlett Johansson situation on our hands. Hey, on our hands. So there's a look at some of the exciting stuff that is coming our way in AI video. I don't know if we're still saying it's just not there yet, but I think from this vantage point, we can see it is right over there. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.